In this video, I will go through the sample solution of the homework and do it together with you, basically. Okay, so I've opened the Jupyter Lab instance here for my homework file. So let's start by looking at our readme, what it's supposed to do. So you see, this is not rendered, but what we can also do with Markdown files, we can right click, open, open with, and then Markdown preview, and we see it nicely rendered. So let's start with the first task, check if a string is a palindrome. So what we would, what I would do for this is, well, I would look at the test palindrome function and see what it tests. And we see, well, it tests if I don't import stuff, that's fine. And it tests for palindromes here. Um, so let's first actually create a terminal and let's run the pi test. Um, if I only want to solve one exercise, I only want to run the PyTest for this very exercise. And I also want to run it very verbose. And if I run it, I see here the test imports, that's fine. But the test palindrome fails, well, because it waits a not implemented error. Okay, so let's start working on this. So obviously this error here is wrong. So some of you had problems with intendation. Um, sorry, that's because Philip works on these in Atom and um, sometimes, um, so depending on what setting you use, did they use steps or spaces. So if you get some form of indentation error, just replace every single line here, um, the indentations again. Uh, as Philip explained, Atom can also do it automatically. But yeah, what do we want to do? Well, first of all, let's, so if I would solve it, I would first of all print it, print the value here. And now let's run, actually let's run the test because, um, Okay, so now we don't return anything. But for the first one, we print hello. So now you must know, um, in Python, there's a nice function called reversed. And so I could simply check for if reversed value equals value. Um, that doesn't quite work, but that almost work. Okay, so let's print reversed value. And we see now this here is a reversed object. This is because Python 3, so in Python 2, this would have worked even, I think. But in Python 3, this reverse is basically an iterator. I'm going to explain this in this le this week's lecture, what iterators are. Um, but it's it, it's not quite correct because it, it's something that's lazily evaluated. So only when this is actually called, Python is going to actually do the reversing. And for now, Python just remembers, hey, this is a reverse, some kind of reverse object, which I eventually want to use. But what we can do with every iterator, we can make a list out of this. So we can make a list out of this. And if we print this, we see this is O-L-L-E-H. So the reverse of hello. That's nice. So what we simply can do, we can also make a list out of the string. You can always make lists out of strings because both lists and strings are, basic, are iterables. Um, so you can iterate from the first to the last item. And every iterable can be made to a list. Now we see, well, this is the reverse of this. And well, we can simply check if this is actually the reverse. So we can simply return list value equals list reversed value. And this should work besides one caveat. This works for most, but so apparently, so it went through here, it went through here. So these are work, but it didn't work for the last one where this will because this is a capital T and this is capital T. And if we look at the test palindrome.py5, we see that this here is supposed to be a palindrome, even though this is a lowercase t and this is a capital T. But luckily, we know there's also a Python function for this, and that's called dot lower. Every string, we can call the dot lower function from every string. So let's look at the result of this. Nice and elegant. All right. Um, how do we know if we can execute? Uh, so what functions there are? Well, there's the dear function. So we could look at dear of a string object. So let's print all that here. Actually, let's do that. So I could run it now, but actually let's do that in a Python terminal. Oops, it's too long us. So let's open a Python console and can look at 
here of string and this now lists all functions or methods there are in a string and we see for example we have dot capitalize so we can one hello dot capitalize capitalize now this capitalize the string can check if it starts with a certain string we can split it so we can split for example hello my dear dot split at the comma so i know this but normally you can just at least look up these functions and it splits at these commas um, we can do a bunch of stuff but we see we can also um, make it lower so this is how we know this okay but now this depends on you knowing uh, the reverse functions if you wouldn't know the reverse functions what you would do is you would what you could do is wait what do you want to do you want to check if the la first letter is the same as the last letter and then if the second letter is the same as the last but one, the third, the last but two, etc. etc. So what you could do is you could loop over the string and then check always for these. But so in this case I actually don't want a Python loop, but I want a Java for style a Java style for loop because I want to check for the first and the first from the back. Python has a nice way of checking um, the first from the back. So I could go for I in range and then the length of my string. So now this is from, well, if my string is 10 characters long, it goes down to the 10th character. But because I'm checking the first with the last and the fifth with the fifth from the back, etc. So I only need to go through half of this. So divided by two, maybe plus one. I'm not sure if I need this plus one. This here is, by the way, an integer uh, division because the range and its um, integers. Now what we can do is we can check if we can check for the if the value at the position i dot lower. You know what they have to use lower is the same as the value at the position minus i. But actually now it's not quite correct because i starts at zero and this in the so. You know that if you have negative indices here, uh, we start from the back. So if I have, a, and that works. So the, so the negative first is the last one, but index and starts with zero. So we have to increase this here by one because now it would compare the first one with the index zero to the first one with the index zero. That's not good because negative zero is zero. So what we have to do is we have to i plus one here, negative i plus one. And again, dot lower. And yeah, well, then, then it's correct. Um, and if this is not the case for one letter, then it's wrong. So what we can do is, well, if this is not the case for one letter, then we know it's not a palindrome at all. But if this loop runs through without this condition ever being true, then the word is a palindrome. So if this loop runs through, with, runs through without getting here, we're still here, so we can return true here. And now this will either this will be called once one if one letter isn't the, isn't correct then already it's false appellant one and this should work just as well yes it works and um, there is a bunch of other stuff you could do there's really a lot so for example you could also go for um, you could also make a list comprehension and let's just show this we could go for uh, um, i for i in value and then we could this here also reverses a list i'm not sure if this works for strings actually yes it does so this here also goes over the string revert so from the back to the front because this is how this slicing here works for strings so this is from this is two and this is the step but if the step is negative then we go from back to front and so this here works too. So we could basically check if um, now we again would have to make lower. So we could check if going worse through the string is actually the same as list of the string. Oh. Turn this. Okay, now this 
Mm -hmm. no. So this would work just as well. So there are a bunch of ways how to solve this exercise. Um, either of them obviously is fine. Okay, next up, task two, find the duplicates in the list. So we're supposed to well, return a list that contains the duplicates. So let's first one pytest test duplicates very verbose. And again, it starts with a not implemented error. So let's go into duplicates.py and let's change this. Okay, so how do we proceed here? So we want to return, so we could think about if we can change the original list or if we create a new list. And if we created a new list, how would this work? Well, if we append, so if we add element to the list, to our new list, we only want to add these elements that are there at least twice. So what we could do is we could loop over our list and then add all the elements to a new list. And if this is, but if it's already in there, um, then we know this is a duplicate and we could also add it to our duplicate list. So we could go for, we could make a duplicates list and then we could also make a scene list. Then we would loop over all the elements in our list. All right. And what we want to do is we want to scene.append this element. And if it's already in scene, if lm in scene, then we also want to add it to the duplicates. Oops, I'm writing then. Duplicates. And, yeah. and then after the loop, we want to return our duplicates. So there are two errors here so far. First of all, we first append it to scene. So there's one error and one bit bad thing. So we don't want to edit it first, but we want to first check if it's already in scene and then we want to append it. So now if we do, if so if we find the first version of this, it's not yet in scene, then we append it and if we run if we um, encounter the second time, then it's already in scene. Then actually, we don't even need to append it anymore. Um, then the scene would contain every element once. So what we could, in this case, do is we could, for example, continue, which is the same as doing else. Yeah. Um, and second of all, um, scene here now is a list that's actually that's fine for small things like this, but let this rather be a set because the order here doesn't matter. It, we don't need them more than once, but we, what, what we're doing here is we're checking if something's in there and we see this uh, and we don't need order or and we don't need um, elements in there more than once, um, then we should rather use a set. So in this case, it's add. Yes, and I think this should work. So let's run PyTest for test duplicates. Indentation error. Okay, so let's. Um, like I said sorry for this. This one can okay. future homework. I thought I did change all of these. Didn't I? Oh, yeah, so it's set. We create an empty set. So if we create a new set um, with elements in there, that's fine. But this here creates a dict. So if we create an empty set, we have to use the explicit set uh, constructor. Yeah, I didn't write a pen. Oh, no. I changed the wrong thing. Yes. So we. Okay, now it works. This is the longer solution. But we could also do something else. So sets have a nice property, and that is that every element is in there only once. So let's print our list here, and let's print what happens if we make a set out of this list. Um, well, for the first one, it doesn't change a thing, but 
believe me, it removes all the duplicates. And now it's a really, really fast and easy way to remove duplicates. So what we could do is we could change our original list and remove the dup. So a set contains every element of this list precisely once. And if we now remove from this list every element of the set, then what we're left with is a duplicate. So what we could do is we could for we could loop through all elements in what happens if we create this to a set and then remove these. And that's basically it. We return our original list because we removed the duplicates. So we removed every, uh, we didn't remove the duplicates, we removed ele every element precisely once, but what's left are the duplicates. This works in this case because um, we don't have double duplicates in here. If we would test, never change the test functions, you're going to fail, not going to get credit for the homework, method, but if we did this here, where the test duplicates, um, so if we would have test in here more than once, this wouldn't work anymore. Why did I? So this wouldn't work anymore. But as we have every element in here only once, this works. But rather, um, this is the first one I had. It's also a fine solution. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so the last one was to get the nth Fibonacci number, where Fibonacci is defined at, where that the first Fibonacci sequ number in the sequence is zero, second is one, and then it's all the one before that plus the one before before that. Okay, so again, two ways. First is the straightforward way. So for straightforward way is actually really easy. So if n equals one, I think it starts with one, right? Now the zero here is supposed to be zero. So if n equals zero, return return zero. And if n equals one, return one. And return and then we call ourselves twice Fibonacci, Fibonacci n minus one plus Fibonacci n minus two. This should work. Test Fibonacci. Very verbose. Inconsistent use of touch and space. So this is really annoying. I get this. Um, so. Uh, like I said, we will fix this for the future homework. Probably also a way to do this actually. Okay, and this already works. So, um, the faster way to, so the, can also achieve the same thing. We could basically return, so this is the same for writing what I just did. We turn zero if n equals zero. It's one if n equals one. It's and then what I have here. So this is a very same thing. I think I need some more. No, not closing it here, but here. So now this goes into the else branch, and then this resolves the else branch still works. Okay, um, but if we know more about the Fibonacci sequence, we can also do something smarter and we could add new variables here um, with default arguments a equals 0, b equals 1. And then we could return, now this is a smart thing, return a if n equals 0 else and then we call also if only once Fibonacci n minus one b a plus b. So 
Huh? Doesn't this work? A plus B, I said. So that this works just as well. If you look up on Wikipedia, um, Fibonacci sequence, um, you're gonna figure out why this also works. So yeah, it's much for the homework. So now that we did all of this, we can run the full fighter fighters. We see all of these paths, so we're done here. All right, as much for the sample solution. If you have any questions, let me know.